same town in Slovenia. Uh, they got married at a church in Pittsburgh. And between the two of them, they had 13 children, mm -hmm. which is amazing, even by those day standards. Uh, one <coughs> aunt, aunt uh, died in childbirth. Uh, not childbirth. Couple of years. Well, that's still <laughs> not childbirth, but not the child. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, of those remaining 12 who grew to adulthood, uh, three of them, Johnny, our dad, Rudy, and Bill, were born in Springfield Township, Ohio, and the rest were born in Pennsylvania. So I wanted to share yeah. just a few things. Um, maybe you guys, some of the cousins know or don't know, but Aunt Jenny. And I shared the same birthday so many, many years. Her and I sent birthday cards back and forth to one another. She was real sweet to do that. We had the same date. And also, um, Russ and I, in the, in the families that, you know, um, some of the brothers and sisters were much older. And so, you know, we were closest probably to Aunt Mary, Bratton, Uncle Bill, and Woody. As we had, you know, kids that were closer to our ages, you know, and that's when we, you know, had um, close affiliation. Some of our cousins were old enough to be, you know, <laughs> like well, parents of ours. Kids, when we were kids, so. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I got married in Camdenville, Gannonsburg, PA, uh, and there was an area that had a large Slovenian population. So, you know, when people come here from Europe or wherever, they always tend to get together with people that they can associate with easily. So that's how that started in Cannonsburg. And then in around 1918, they uh, relocated to a farm in Springfield Township on South Range Road. And I think that may still be in the family. I don't know. For Sure. Yes? Yeah, uh, Irene and Ronnie's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, they lost the farm during the Depression. <coughs> then they bought a coal mine and operated that for about eight years. Uh, Livingston Coal Mine. Uh, our dad and several of his brothers, they would get up in the morning before dawn, go in, mine coal come back, feed the animals on the farm, and then those that were still going to school would then go to school. Yeah, my dad told me he was um, between the ages of 12 and 14, and he did a lot of the coal mining. That was the mine in Petersburg, right? Yes, yeah. It was called Livingston, and then it was Cedars. It was right up there. Right yeah. It was called Cedars. Yeah. Cedars, too? Okay. Yeah. So, very 
very cool. Uh, then, let's see, the last family home was built on the Andrews Road in 1940. Uh, there's a picture of almost everybody. Uh, if you look at the little guy in the middle in the front, that's our dad. Um, Uncle Bill, even though he was already born, uh, is not in the picture because I guess he was quite sweet. <laughs> so this picture was taken around 1924, and then the family got together again a few years later for another family photo, and this was probably late 30s. Uh, we've got in the front there my aunt Helen, Jenny, and Mary. This time, you know, I can recognize like all my uncles, you know, because even though they were very young, <laughs> you can still say, oh yeah, that's so and so. So, real quick, Woody, our dad, Johnny, Bill, Tony, Wint, Louie, Joe, and Frank, who I never met. You know, we already talked about the camps. So, that was uh, a nice family photo. And our dad was Rudy. Right. Now, the first house in Cannonsburg was built around 1911. And it was built by Grandpa Olin. Uh, and I apologize, I wish that picture was better, but it got really, he faced badly over the years. I thought it was interesting when I looked up on the map where this is at, that the local SNPJ is right down the street within walking distance. So imagine he was a member of the law. This is actually Stermaine in Cannesburg. Yeah, I'm suffering. Is the house still there? Well, your dad. You ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now that's a Google Street View from 1919, 2012. Okay, so it's like you know, the porch is gone. Well, the porch is gone now, but in 2012 it was still there. Right, right. So sort of cool. Uh, yeah, you know what? Thanks for reminding me. Uh, the Olin, look real close. The sign up there says G Olin Meat Market. Now, I didn't know that the Olins were involved in meat as well as building, and all I can think of it was some venture for a few years, and you know, they, decide, they decided, no, we're not gonna go ahead and pursue this, we're just gonna do building. If they had decided to pursue it, I think we'd have got, given the Rooley Brothers a <laughs> uh, I don't know, anybody got more information on that? No, I just, I read up before I went to see the house, uh, said that Grandpa Olin was well, you the first treasurer of the local that Would you put the mind step, step ahead and talking around so we can hear him clearly? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. so when I visited the home, um, I'm Mike, by the way, I'm well, Woody's youngest son. So I was there, I don't know, two months ago. And I read up before that, I guess um, Grandpa Olin was the first treasurer of the Pennsylvania chapter of what's now called the SNPJ. In fact, that was called that K. You know, I tried to look up if that was the same. And yeah, I, I think I can get very close to it. And yeah, so he was, when I read the history on him, uh, he was somewhat of like a jack of all trades. He had a butcher shop, he did building, he was a local kind of a counselor, like they'd come to him for advice and stuff, especially the Slovenians that were in the area, because as Russ mentioned, you know, everybody was kind of sticking together, they spoke the same language and everything. So uh, very interesting, you know, very dynamic kind of guy, I guess, but it was pretty cool to see, to see the house. In there. So, yeah. Very cool. So if you want the address, I can take a ride down. Okay, okay so we, you know, finished up the pre-World War II stuff. So what's next for us, World War II? And there were six of the brothers that went in to the war, served in different military divisions. I, I know our dad was uh, Air Force Search Sergeant. What was Uncle Woody? He was Army. Uh, and he, I think he was a tech sergeant, I forget what his, his last promotion was, but he had the last thing I knew. Dad, how about Uncle Will? Dad was a corporal, and he was, he 
they say it was a corman and a carpenter. Okay. Well, all the ones are carpenters. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that could put a band-aid on somebody. Yeah. Uh, you engine. might want to revise that. There was no Air Force in World War II. It was called the Army Air Corps. Air Corps, okay. Yeah. 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 My uncle was in it. Was in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm just thought it no, no, thank you. Yeah. We're, we're just um, <laughs> interestingly, Uncle Joe, he was over 30 years old at the time, which for somebody going into the fight of war is, is getting pretty old. And he may have already had a family by then. I don't know for sure. Yeah. Uh, may but, I just a question? Why were all six boys allowed to go to war? I don't know. Well, maybe because there were so many of them, they figured, well, six, you know. <laughs> 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 well, I know what you're saying. They, they spread them out, not like the Sullivan brothers that were all killed on one ship. Yeah, no, they, they, they were spread out in different okay. theaters of the war. Yeah. I think Uncle John was in Uncle Tony, maybe North Africa. Uh, but uh, I know our dad, Rudy, and Bill were both in Europe, and I'm not sure about Johnny. Well, Dad told Johnny was story. in Pacific. Okay, because he got malaria in the Pacific Islands. Oh, that's right. Well, he dad, suffered with it. Yeah. Dad told the story to all of us about how he hadn't seen Bill in in quite a while, even though they were both in Europe. And they were um, in France, I think. Yeah. And he went into a, a restroom to use the restroom, and Bill was right next to him. You <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is at the sink after you're done. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh my goodness. But yeah, you so walk they up and it's spent like. Spent some time together. Yeah, that it was a real chance meeting while they were over there. So, you know, very fortunate everybody came back. Uh, there was actually an article done in the Vindicator. I'm guessing 15 years ago to tell that story. And the quarters, there's a picture of all the brothers in their uniform. Very nice. So, the war's over. What do you do now? Well, everybody knows building, you start a, a lumber company and you start building houses. Six different brothers in the partnership, uh, Uncle Wentz, uh, Uncle Louie, and then Tony, Johnny, Rudy, and Bill. Uh, started in 1945. They also had a full service hardware store in the front. You could buy you know, hardware, paint, uh, I think even clothing, that sort of thing. Young Dave's over here. Maybe if you feel like you need to pitch in, <laughs> feel free to do so. And then the brothers also had a building business that was part of the lumber yard. So they weren't just building as individual brothers, but as a building company. The age ranges um, between the brothers at this point, uh, Uncle Bill was the youngest, and Uncle Wimp was the oldest. Bill was 22, and Wimp was 38 when this business first started. So that's... The picture is from mid-70s, and that's our dad's Jeep. One of the good guys standing to the left, that's Elvie. Elvie's up. So he was a, a good friend of the family. Uh, they built in that area dozens of homes every year. Um, some through the lumber yard, some individual brothers, because, you know, like I said, uh, Woody and some of the other brothers weren't part of the lumber yard, but yet they were out there building and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, over the years, the brothers would decide to leave the, the lumber yard, so they got bought out. And the last remaining brother that owned the lumber yard was Louie, and then he ran it with his two sons, uh, Butch and Tom, and then Butch's son, Dave. Uh, he worked there too. And when did it close? I was guessing 2008? 2006. Okay. Uh, one other little interesting story. Uh, when they were first formed in the lumber yard, they would have monthly meetings of the members, and things were going so well. Uh, a lot of times, people wouldn't show up. So you'd like have a meeting, be like one or two people. So my dad said, okay, we're gonna fix this. 
So he takes a hundred dollar bill out of the cash register and takes it to each of their seats for the meeting and says, if you show up, it's yours. If you don't, we split it amongst the rest of us. <laughs> and as soon as he did that, uh, membership improved. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember often as a little girl, I was only, only two, two and a half, maybe three, and my dad would take me to work with him at the lumber yard. And that was just always so exciting and fun. We got to sit on the secretary's desk. She had candy or money and gave it to us. And then I got this verified. We weren't sure, but I went across the street to Isley's to have breakfast. So for those of you that remember Isley's in the little plaza there, he would take me there. It was always real fun. Me and my brother Mark. Besides Mark and Randy, yeah, that, that's that's Mark and Randy. <laughs> yeah, pumpkins, yeah. So we had that on the farm where we lived at uh, South Avenue Western Reserve for quite a few years. And just a couple little stories about that, and these are personal family stories, but we, um, Mark and Randy, raised pumpkins and gourds for years. And um, anything we had left over, we carved and put in the front yard. And some of you may remember on South Avenue by Western Reserve Road, we had this huge display in the front yard. And it got to the point where he just would drill a hole in the back, knock the, the seeds down, carve a face, and stick a Christmas light. You know? like oh my gosh, time. we did hundreds of them, you know, in the yard. And and finally, my dad said, "This is enough." After picking many many flash cubes, so, so I'm really dating myself now. Flash cubes up off the yard and garbage and trash. And my mom got a hold of the Boardman Rotary, and it moved down to Boardman Park, and it still goes on today. They have a car out down there. And then one other little tiny thing, Mark and Randy had uh, the world's longest score in the Guinness Book of World Records for five years running back in the early in the 80s, 80s, early 80s. Yeah. late 70s, early 80s. So that was kind of a neat thing that happened. It was a legendary award. So now we're going to talk about some. Related things, not directly with the lumberyard, but with the brothers. And the first thing we're going to talk about is St. Paul's. Uh, when the Olin family moved to Springfield Township, they were one of the only Catholic families there. And over the years, more moved in. And early 50s, uh, they wanted to see what it would take to get a church built here. So our aunt Mary Brenton, uh, some Yashesco family members, uh, Petricks, and maybe others, they, they canvassed the neighborhood, they found out how many people were in the area that were Catholic, I think it was over 50, and they petitioned the bishop for a Catholic church. Uh, so the bishop said okay, uh, they created the charter, I guess in 52, they broke ground in early 53, and hard to believe, but by that Christmas they were saying mass in the church. Uh, then they formally dedicated it in 1954. Okay, so a few things about that. The church sits on eight acres of land. Five of the acres were purchased. The other three acres were donated by um, my dad, Uncle Bill, and Uncle Wynn. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the rector's house belonged to Uncle Wynn. My, my dad uh, built the rectory house, and we have pictures of it were the garages. Now oh, he had a deer hanging there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were just there the other day to see the kids graduation from the uh, preschool. And uh, I took a lot of pictures and I, I, we spent a lot of time. We put that little lake out front. Right. And, uh, and I also remember that uh, we were only there till like 1959. Then we moved to Woodland. But, uh, so the church was built, and then the rectory was turned over to the church. It was years turned over later. to the church okay. because the pastor lived up there across from the New Dollar General. Yeah, and it was like a duplex, <laughs> and uh, they wanted the pastor close to the church. So when we moved out, he moved here, and it was Father Powers. Oh, so yes. I yes. remember yes. him. Another little piece of trivia. Thank you, Ed. Sure. The, uh, the first baptism was Cousin Frank. Frank, you know. did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you ever have a Jim Fry 
Jim Fry? Yeah. Well, I knew Jim. Did Jim. you? Yeah, because yeah, he worked at the lumber yard. He was uh, yeah. working behind the counter. Jim worked at the lumber yard. Yeah. 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 I remember they had a dump truck and they'd go over to Bessemer or someplace and get plank. Yeah. You raise the bed up, pull out nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they unloaded the trains in Bessemer. Oh, they brought the lumber back in the middle of town. So I helped unload the trains before we brought the lumber back in the middle of town. Yeah, good old Jim Fry. Jim Fry always had to have a spittoon next to him. <laughs> <laughs> always had a little bit of tobacco <laughs> going down the side of the street. Uh, let's see. He liked to play punch sports. He had a store next door. Jim Fry would come in there and punch and punch and punch sports. Oh, yeah. One wasn't like a full price. That's sort of like the lottery today. <laughs> can you repeat that so the folks back here can? Uh, they had these little things. Was that at George's? The original? Or where was that across the street? What was the name of the George? Punch board. Oh, yeah. Next door. Oh, next door. Yeah. And you would buy these little things and you push through and or like you got a chance maybe you want something. I don't know. Yeah. So it was like sort of like today's lottery. Like to play pinball. Uh, yeah. That was in the 1940s. Here's a picture of St. Paul's before the addition of the, or the new church, rather, in 1998. So that shows some of the old stuff there. And I wanted to mention, too, um, my dad uh, had a lot of uh, historical items, and um, I got them after he passed away. And I found a book from St. Paul's that's quite old. I don't even know if the Historical Society has one or not, but it was with all of, you know, the, the initiation, the beginning of the church, and all of the donations made by everybody for, like, all the different things, and as I was reading through them, I came across some interesting things. The statue of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary was donated by our grandma, Olin, and right. okay? And then the tabernacle was donated, which um, when Larry and I were at church this morning, I said, is that the tabernacle? And he says, yeah, I believe that's the original, uh, was donated by um, Aunt Mary and Uncle John Brown. So that was kind of cool to find out. Can I step in? Sure, yeah, yeah, please. We, uh, when we were younger, we were all older boys there. Uh, Mike's brothers, Bob, Dick, Woody, me and Frank, I'm Eddie Olin. Uh, you know, there, there were 15 of us. We were all, all the boys there. On your father, Paul Woods, father, Haiti. Uh, uh, the, the previous, or the pastors ahead of him. And uh, the biggest story about that, I just remember when uh, little Woody, uh, uh, when he was an older boy, he'd go in there and he'd. Uh, with his brother, they'd steal communion wine. I guess I would say to all those altar boys, oh. no, no priests, huh? no, no priests came up. Before he got there. <laughs> so the next other little side trip here is going to involve Petersburg more. And that has to do with the PA Turnpike. Back in 1951, the last section of the PA Turnpike was put in from Pittsburgh up to the state line. And it opened, I forget exactly, it might have been early, yeah, early 51. And uh, it just stopped right at the Ohio border. So what you had to do was get off at the one. Uh, Turnstile station there, which uh, the hooked road. up to Berkey Road, huh? Yeah. yeah. Right. Road, and Berkey then it road. came out to 321, and everybody like had to get off the turnpike, okay? There. There was no other place to go. So suddenly, Petersburg is inundated by hundreds and hundreds of cars, you know, so per gallon. hour. 18 cents a gallon. 18? Okay. <laughs> we were guessing at 18 cents. <laughs> So, Russ, this is where it stopped, right? Yeah. Right here. Uh, okay. Here's us right there. 
Or that's Berkey Road, 321. Over here somewhere is where they got off the turnpike. So this section wasn't even used up to the state line. And this that wasn't was even put in yet. That was Dixon Road. Okay. And uh, according to Ohio, they were going to finish that other piece uh, within a year. Okay. So uh, my dad and the Yashevsko brothers were sitting at Petersburg Creamery saying, hey, you know, we need a gas station down here. So apparently uh, our dad bought all four corners at Berkey Road and 321, and uh, they opened up a service station. Go ahead, Mary. Yeah. They brought a cottage from the bowling alley that dad owned. They hauled a cottage down there, and they installed the pumps, and they opened for business in 14 days. Wow. <laughs> wow. Stuff doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, virtually everybody getting off the turnpike eating gas because they had little tanks and they had just got done traveling from Pittsburgh. So they were like making money hand over fist. Did they? I knew there were more stations that opened up over the years. But after my dad and his uh, two business partners, were operating this for two months. A guy comes up to him and says, hey, I'll buy you out. And they said, how much? He said, $15,000, okay? And they thought about it. He says, you know what? In a few more months, Ohio section is gonna be in. This is all gonna be a thing of the past. So they said, okay, we'll take it. So they take their 15,000, split it up three ways, 5,000 apiece. What do you do? Well, they went to the Caribbean, <laughs> party for two months, <laughs> came home about broke. <laughs> so, meanwhile, the uh, Ohio part didn't get built, uh, and the guy that bought that station from him kept running it for another two more years, and he made probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, that's uh, <laughs> one of those business deals that could have been better, but. Oops. <laughs> You know what they did down there with that? Hey, we had this business right over here. Yeah, they tore it down. Cars right. started coming in with water. Yeah. They were hurried up down there and buried tanks and they were okay. down, <laughs> down in the water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the tanks got water. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so they didn't get it. So here's a picture of courtesy of Ed Yashesko. That's a picture of his nephew up there. So he's not directly related, but uh, that's the station that they had apparently. And uh, I, I look at that picture and I go, oh, look at those old cars. They're, they're brand new. <laughs> brand new in that picture. We had a what? little side trip here. Well, believe it or not, we're going to Arizona. Whoa. Uh, my dad and a couple of the brothers that were in the lumber yard, they, for some reason, again, I don't know if Dave can help us out here, but they decided to in, invest in another lumber yard all the way in Arizona, maybe to help, you know, supply this lumber yard with lumber and, and other stuff. But in early 61, my dad probably pulled the short straw. So he had to take everybody and move us out to Arizona. Uh, but uh, anyway, our one sister, Annie, was also born out there. 
And uh, there's a picture in the front of the lumber yard. Brand new cars again. Uh, well, 61, yeah. But. Uh, We're at Scottsdale with that road thing. Okay, this is actually in Payson. Here. Oh, Payson. Yeah, Payson. Scottsdale. We moved to Scottsdale uh, initially, and then Payson was like an hour away heading north. I know, I live in Arizona. Yeah, okay, so. Anyway, this, this was on a, a part of uh, Payson here. Uh, and then we have a little picture here. Okay, who can guess who that is? <laughs> <laughs> That's me and my dad at the Tonto Lumber Company. Um, and just a few little items that I remember. I turned four when we were in Arizona. Um, Russ and I got to be in a rodeo together. He was in the grease pig contest. I was in the goose chasing contest. Neither of us won anything, but it was a lot of fun. Um, the backyards in Scottsdale used to get irrigated. They were all sunken, and the irrigation would come so many times, you know, a couple times a week sometimes, depending on how the weather was. And we'd go out and play, and everybody had a swimming area in their backyard, you know, because the water would be like, you know, eight, eight inches, six inches, eight inches high. It was pretty cool. And um, when we lived in Pace, and we lived in a, 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 a resort area that was being built, okay? But there was one or two homes that were finished, and the guy agreed to let Dad move us in. So, so we moved from Scottsdale to Pace. After school was out in Scottsdale, we all moved up to Pace in that yeah. for the whole summer. For the so summer. that's the, the next one. And we had a, the resort area was nice. There was a swimming pool. It didn't have any water in it yet. We used to play in that. And then there was a lake in the back. And uh, Randy, my brother, uh, we had a dog, a, a Labrador retriever named Duke. And uh, my brother Randy, our babysitter, Jeanette at the time, all of us kids would go down to the lake. And Randy got in the water, she was watching all of the rest of us, and he started to go under. And the dog dove in and swam up to my brother and he grabbed onto his collar and he brought him to shore and he literally saved his life. So, you know, Duke was amazing and the day we, ready to move back home get in the car we couldn't find him so duke ended up not coming back with us because we couldn't find him the day that we left it was kind of sad oh, yeah and my dad moved us all back because he decided i'm not sure how the business was going but he saw a lot of things it was still the wild wild west my dad it still wore is. A, a holster with the gun he didn't need open carry yeah it was <laughs> <like> <laughs> And he didn't feel it was the right place to try to raise a family under those circumstances back in the 60s. So we all come back home. <laughs> so we're done with the little side trips. Now we're going to go back to Middletown and look at some aerial photography. Uh, Mary, I would say that? initially, I worked for the Soil Water Conservation District, like I said in the beginning, as a conservation educator for about nine years, and we have historical area photos. So if any of you are ever interested in going and looking at historical photos, uh, Russ and I went down there, we, we took pictures of several years, and you can see progression. And we thought this would be a great opportunity for everyone to see how things changed over the years. So, 1938. 1938, before the lumber yard, before World War II. Uh, this is New Middletown here. So these are fortunate, nice, uh, you know, landmarks here. Tallow Road, Struthers Road, Route 170, Unity Road. Where's Ginger Hill? Ginger Hill, right? Oh, yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but you can see, just, you know, uh, very few houses except right in town, and then there's some farmhouses, and that's about it. Now, the next year, unfortunately, takes us all the way to 59. I think the Olin Lumber Company did a lot of that. 
Uh, and then we have woodland over here. And then we have sycamore coming through here. Uh, and I don't know if uh, the plaza in the middle of town plaza is right there. Works for the fire table uh, place now, everybody. I think that it's that. Uh, right. Uh, one thing I want to also point out if you notice, there's a bit of a squarish appearance there. That's not a mistake. Each one of those sides is one mile. And when the Western Reserve land grant, early 1800s, I'm not quite sure, uh, they divided this part of the country up into sections. I know that this one north of here is section two. This, I'm not sure if it's section three, section four, uh, but these were all uh, just big squares. And then from there, you know, people like started out by owning the whole section or half of it or something like that. And it just started to, uh, uh, you know, be subdivided over the years into smaller and smaller farms. But that's how they started out, and that's why you have that kind of appearance there. Russell, yeah. how do you, how did they choose Sycamore Drive? The name? Sycamore. The name and the, 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 the way. Well, the I can only imagine. You, you know the. It is the first. Well, we had. You, you know what? I'm gonna. Check. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Sycamore trees used to lie yeah. Main Street. Sycamore is right down. Yeah. So I would yeah. say that that's the reason. There's one sycamore tree left on sycamore. Yep. <laughs> There's one sycamore tree left on sycamore. Well, somebody should plant some. Those were cut down years ago. But that's why. I, and I would assume that's why. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. That was the first street of sycamore tree, right? Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. Foster yeah. and Jeffrey. Yeah. yeah. So then from there we go to 1965, and a little bit more going on. Uh, we have Daring Wood, which is going on in this direction. There's three houses. Okay. We have Stacy Drive, which is this one here, which goes in a little cul-de-sac here. Uh, and then our Uncle Bill uh, says, I don't know if it was servicing these houses or not, but he put in the first sewage treatment plant That's in right. behind the county. Okay, that's exactly. you know, sort of a big deal, and that's where that's at. Uh, and then I want to point out that probably the only dead end street in the middle town is Olin Drive. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know what to say. I'm not real sure what happened there. Yeah, probably more was supposed to go on there, but never did. Hey, Russ. Yeah. Did you know that uh, Winford? Drive Linford. that goes off of, off of Jeffrey and right. Poland was named after, or Tony put that in. Crawford and who? It was Ford for Crawford, Crawford who was Mary, his wife, and uh, yeah. and Olin. So Lynn, Lynn okay. and Ford. Yeah, my dad used to say, you know, these Olins are so creative, you know, so he <laughs> come up with these names. So he did tell me that story uh, numerous times. Interesting. Uh, let's see what else here. Oh, I guess I should point out too, uh, where some of the brothers lived, uh, this became Uncle Johnny's here, yeah. house, lake. This was Uncle Bill's house, lake. Uh, you start to see a pattern. <laughs> Let me know. Our dad built a house down in this area, in the lake. Uh, our uncle, Tony, Tony he had a house over here, and there was no lake available, so he built a swimming pool. <laughs> uh, then Uncle Louie was up this way where the trailer park is on Struthers Road. Uh, he didn't have the capability for a, a lake. I don't know if he had a pool or not. He had a pool. Yeah. He sold that. <laughs> then when he sold that, him and Bill moved down and formed yeah. South Ridge yeah. Way. Yeah. He's coming up, and there's a lake. Yeah. So yeah. Uncle Wynn might have been the only one without it. As far as South Range Lake, yeah. before it was a lake, there was a creek that ran right. through it. My dad used to have cows there, and he used to go out in a pasture and play with the cattle poodles. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
Session stand, and I mean, probably many of you might have been there in the past to swim. And uh, we ended up living on the lake there uh, for years, for years, till it till was sold off. Jenny Raker. Yeah. Jenny Raker, you still live there. Yeah, I'm sure her brother. But, Vicky, but, I was, but I was the cure of that. My dad bought Vicky's dad's old house. Right by the lake. And, right. Uh, okay. Yeah, we, we grew up there, and they they formed that lake and concession stand pavilions. And, oh, entertained thousands of people. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about, about South Range in a few more slides. And my dad never took us. It's swim. okay. We were too busy on the farm. <laughs> oh my gosh. We <laughs> got slightly ahead. That's okay. That's okay. Sorry. That's no, okay. no, not a problem. Um, so in 72, we had a few more streets going in, Robinwood, over here, uh, and then Sandy Drive, and some other uh, houses in that area. You can see where there's some development starting over here. Uh, that was primary cousins, uh, uh, Dave and Jerry. And then our uncle, Uncle John, was doing Circle View over circle, here. Yeah. And also, a couple of other things that were done by the, uh, the brothers, uh, our Uncle Bill had a car wash uh, right where the library is now in this old town. And a loss is. And a loss is. That's where the loss is, was. The car wash went away, then they built losses. Okay, and then that went away, and they built the, and the library. library. Yes. Okay. Our Uncle Tony had a uh, laundromat roughly across the street from the lumber yard. 
Louis built the pavilion, yeah. even, and they just kept it. I don't know what's going on. Where is that, Russ? Uh, off of Struthers Road, when you're headed towards Struthers Road, uh, to the right there, you know. He, he used to have, there used to be polka music at that pavilion. Yeah, I never go. And Louie had the house right next door, and they'd have polka music and pig roasts there. Yeah. And that's, I think, what set them into the mind of doing the lake, right. was entertaining people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one other thing. Uh, there was a unique relationship with banks during those days. Now, I'm sure it was similar with other brothers, but my dad would tell me that he never once had to go into a bank and sign any papers for a loan. Try that today. <laughs> he would get on the phone, call up his buddy at the bank, and say, hey, I'm gonna start building a house. And the guy would say, well, how much you need to tell him? He said, okay, hang up the phone, and then the money would be available. And of course, he never, ever defaulted on anything. You know, it was just a whole different time. Different world. So, Good word, yeah. Uh, another interesting little thing here is a water for South Branch Lake. Okay, we have our opening of the Hump Lake Monday through Friday, 11 to sunset. Sunset, yeah. Sunset. Uh, so, anyway. And what is one of the things you do, or you can do, at South Range Lake? And that is have a family reunion. So this was the first bowling family reunion in 19, that's not 1904, 1964. Uh, and that is, almost without exception, all of the first cousins, okay? Uh, 53 in all. <laughs> Grandma in the middle. Yep, Grandma. Uh, let's see, you are. I see you, Jim. Okay. The only one missing is um, John. 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 Okay. Yeah. We figured maybe he wasn't feeling well. So, okay, so after the brothers, cousins also got involved in the building business. And I've mentioned some of that already, but I just want to point out some of the contributions. Richard Stubbleton um, got a law degree and started a land title company, and he did virtually all the closings on home sales and stuff uh, over the years, and we still use them today. Uh, we've got Dave here, Jerry here, and they built many houses, uh, you know, in the Middletown and over in Poland, and I think they're finally about finished with that, retired. yeah, retired and stuff. Uh, we've got Butch and Tom, who are Louie's sons, out from the lumber yard, and Butch's son, Dave, was also helping. We have cousin Richard, who was into real estate. Uh, cousin Woody, I think he was doing building and stuff for a while, right? So, yeah. Uh, we've got cousin Bob, who, I know he was involved in painting, and I don't know if there's anything else related to construction and stuff. Um, we built some homes in circles. Oh, uh, did he? Okay. Uh, we have cousin Ronnie, who is also involved in construction. We have my brother Mark, who has been a carpenter and a, a, you know home builder all his life. Uh, we have cousin Tug, Paul Stevelton, who built many, many homes, uh, mostly in the Poland area. Uh, we have cousin Billy, who was a plumber, and you know, plumbed many, many houses. We have, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> There's Ed. Built many houses. Built many, many houses, many houses. Uh, cousin Dougie. And uh, he was uh, involved in like linoleum covering, floor covering, and yeah. floor covering. Okay. Uh, and Mike, there's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell. There's cousin Frank. Before he moved out west, he was involved in some house building. There's Jack. Yeah, there's Jack. Did you build houses? <laughs> Just the one I did. Oh. <laughs> hey, the most important. <laughs> and then. I built some houses on 
I moved back in 2000. Um, so that's uh, uh, that's going to do this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so um, I went back to college in the um, early 1990, and um, I took an entrepreneurship class. And, and one of my um, assignments was to interview uh, someone who was in business for themselves. So I decided to interview my dad. And so I have some really interesting things. He gave me a timetable of all the different things from starting a bicycle business when he was like 12 years old to you know, all the way up to, you know, the building and the lumber yard and everything like that. But, and then I asked him some questions at the end. And I asked him a question, if you had five minutes, what advice would you give to someone wanting to start their own business? And this is quote, unquote, from my father. Forget playing and forget your leisure time. You must work at least 80 hours per week if you're going to make it. Have a positive attitude. Think and plan and check with people who will give you honest and sound advice. Have confidence in yourself and your abilities. Have faith in God, talk to him often, and never forget his less fortunate ones. Never try to get ahead unless it is with honesty. Treat others as you would want them to treat you. That was my dad's Say, does Brad know about it? Huh? Does Brad know about it? He knows about it. In fact, we were talking about maybe letting it be displayed down there, but after a while, when we didn't do anything about it, I and decided that. against it because it's, you keep it in a dark place. You don't even put it in. It used to be in a paper bag, but then the <laughs> outer label was starting to get, you know, messed up. So I just have it sitting somewhere very safe. <laughs> know that it exists, and if you ever think you want to do a talk about the wire welch distillery, I might be able to help you out. A little one, bit. one of the wires, when I was a young kid, <clears throat> Jimmy Wire from Poland, his father supposedly offered five grand for that back in the early 70s. The same one. 
Okay. And it has a, uh, a bit of a past. Hey, I know my uh, Uncle Bill had it. Russ, uh, Reed Metzka has an empty bottle. Well, Imagine that. Brad <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you.